review for Instant Collectors. This is me, Daniel East 1000, back again with another Star Wars review. We're going to be having a look at a Lego set. I don't often buy Lego, but as per my recent ish haul video link up there somewhere for you to check that out great now with Sith Lord 229 this was a lego set that i didn't really want to pass up and so today we're going to be having a look at jewel on mandalore this is inspired by the clone wars season 7 confrontation between ahsoka and darth maul ages seven and up let me go let me die Before we get into the set itself, let's have a quick look at the packaging. Of course, you've got a little Lego clone trooper up there, which is one of Ahsoka's 332nd, as per the markings, Lego styles at the top. Picture of the set, things that you get in it. On the side, there's just a picture of the minifigs, as well as the Star Wars Lego logo. On the other side, a ton of legal garb. On the top, just a bit of a size comparison for you, so you can see what sort of height the minifigures are going to be at least lego life app and more legal mcguffin and on the back you've got a full breakdown of all the sets features of which we should probably build up now naturally you do get your instruction manual of which is 75 pages long, details everything, basically what you expect from a Lego instruction manual. It tells you how to build the set and something else that I always really do like that Lego do include is a full breakdown of the contents that should be included. I have to say the build of this was relatively simple, but there's one, two, three things that are a little bit problematic for me, but we'll talk about those in the review. Slight spoiler, but it's, it's this. <laughs> With that being said though, let's talk about the main thing that you're probably going to be picking this set up for, and that's the minifigures. Now, because of LEGO's blocking nature, they're really like a stylistic interpretation of the characters, and that's something I really love about LEGO. I find that really interesting to see how they take some of the character designs and implement that. So, starting off with Darth Maul, one thing that is slightly inaccurate is the fact that he doesn't have a full set of horns. He's only missing one, bless him. And it's cool that LEGO have created a new piece so they can actually include horns for him, which is something that older minifigures of Maul that I had in the past didn't really have. So it's really impressive to see how far Legos come. But aside from that, this minifig has front and back torso printing, leg printing, and some really nice head printing as well. Of course, you can see a bit of that Darth Maul bod sticking out. Darth Maul also comes with his iconic double-bladed lightsaber. Moving on to Ahsoka, I love the Leku headpiece. This minifigure includes torso prints on the front and back and leg printing. You also get, and this is something I love about Lego, two interchangeable heads, one with a more neutral smiling face and one with a more angry face, of which I'm just gonna switch that to now. Of course, you get her two lightsabers. I do wish they'd used a slightly thinner lightsaber beam just for a show toe. So yeah, the minifigures get a good mark. So now let's take a look at the main build, of which is the Mandalorian throne, of which Darth Maul was perched on. The only thing that would have maybe made this set a little bit better is if it included Clone Trooper Jesse, just kind of sat there passively underneath Darth Maul's heel. So yeah, the set itself, this part at least, is pretty good. It looks fairly accurate to how the throne looked in the show. And it also has some really cool features, namely in the fact that Leo actually watched the show and simulated in the set a breakable glass feature with the window here. <laughs> the only downside to this, I will say, is it does feel a little bit flimsy. And also, when you pick it up, this does have a tendency to collapse because there's nothing to really secure it into place. This window has two sticker sheets. <laughs> I mean, seriously, trying to make these things line up because they're two separate ones was a nightmare. Why couldn't it be printed? Nonetheless, though, play feature makes complete sense. This other one, though, has a sliding compartment for a hidden blaster. You know, that iconic scene where Darth Maul went for the blaster in. It's okay. I don't really remember that happening. Still, it's a nice little feature. It's quite a bizarre one, but it just adds something to the set, I suppose. The throne's nice, I like it. It creates for a nice little 
display setting. I've always kind of wanted that from LEGO because they always seem to go for the obvious choice of which is starships and things like that. But things like this, that's nice because you can have it, your minifigures on them. And that's what I personally really like as a display thing. Your mileage may vary. The last building component from this set is the Mandalorian sarcophagus of which you can house Darth Maul in and send him to Horny Jail. It's quite a basic build but effective. It even has a window so you can see Darth Maul's eyes peeking out. Just like the show. Love your suit. This gets plus marks for the thing itself. It's slightly let down by the fact that there's two stickers. <sighs> just print it, Lego, just print it. Overall, I really like this set and it gets 7.5 out of 10 Darth Maul horns for reasons listed here. So that's my review. That was quite fun to do. Hope you enjoyed. This is me, Daniel Lee from Fails, and signing out. Thank you very much for watching.